Welcome back to Open Source Summit North America 2025. My name is Paul Nashwati and I'm covering the app dev space and all things open source. I'm joined today by Matt. Matt, welcome. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Yeah, great, thanks for being on. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I'm the executive director at the PyTorch Foundation and uh, the GM of AI at the Linux Foundation. So uh, in my role at, at the PyTorch Foundation, I manage the day-to-day -day and our strategy around our, you know, our projects, the, uh, our programs that we are, we're developing, and fundamentally community building around to the fast-moving space of AI, right? It certainly is fast-moving, for yeah. sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, well, PyTorch is really, really cool technology, right? It's really cool tech. It's, you know, for those that don't, may, may not know it, I can, I'm not going to do it any justice, but basically saying it's, other than saying it's an open source machine learning framework that helps with, uh, you know, deep neural networks, right? Right. But maybe you can explain a little bit better than I did, because I'm sure I didn't do any justice. Sure, I mean, in, in brief, that's what it, it does, right? It's, it's, a, it's sort of the de facto framework for architecting, building, training models, right? Um, and and you know, distributing those models more broadly. And so the uh, PyTorch framework itself obviously emerged from a meta um, around 2017, came to the Linux Foundation uh, and in, under the um, PyTorch Foundation, and we've been managing and running the foundation for the last two and a half years. Um, we recently became an umbrella foundation, and so now our scope is is broader than just this, the PyTorch framework, yeah. right? So we're, we're, we've welcomed some new projects, VLLM, DeepSpeed, and uh, more exciting projects to come. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I can't wait to see what's happening. This is a very fast-moving landscape here, so it's right. it's pretty cool stuff. So let's talk about just going to jump right in and talk about the sure. fundamental differences between the AI models versus traditional software license models. Uh, let's let's talk about the new approach, like like o, OMD. Oh, I'm sorry, OMDW, right? And yeah. what that means and why why that's important from a licensing perspective. Sure, sure. So the around two years ago, we started work on this open like model openness framework, and we were looking at from the open source vantage point, the differences between conventional software and, uh, and open models effectively, right? And so models have a lot of components. We've you know, identified 16 different components that fall into categories of code, documentation, or data, right? And so we look at model weights as like high dimensional data. Model architectures are actually you know, sort of a blend of software and uh, configuration, and so there's all these sort of adjacent components as well that you don't find in conventional software, right? Yeah. And so um, the work with the model openness framework evolved. We saw in practice that the community was facing some challenges with it in terms of adopting um, and, and classifying their models. And so what we did is we looked at the industry, like what, are, what, what do we have out there for licenses that would be appropriate for models, right? And so we initially started off looking at per content models, right? So OSI approved for software. We looked at like CDLA for data, and then like CC by 4.0 as maybe a recommended license for um, documentation. Okay. Da and, and so we evolved from there. And we ended up starting a, a journey around nine months ago on several iterations of a license that would be specifically tailored for open models, right? And so take the permissive approach, and look at covering all artifacts that we're um that you're, you'll find in a distribution of a model. Yeah, and I think this is important to note. I mean, when it, if I'm going to simplify it to kind of bring it down to like the model openness framework really helps uh, standardize and simplify the AI artifacts that come into it, right? So right. if you take those AI artifacts and you know be prior to having this model, you had to manage and catalog these things individually, right? right. But when you look at it, in addition to simplifying and standardizing, which is very important in itself, what are the, some of the benefits compared to the current land, you know, fragmented landscape? If people are using their own bespoke solutions or their own way of doing things, why should they go in this direction versus doing their own thing? Yeah, so I think one of the most important things uh, when you're innovating or building on models is to understand what you can use them for, right? And so when we look at permissive licensing, we know that we can <laughs> you know, use, study, modify, redistribute, and build upon models, right? And, and, and so, we have that experience in, op in open software, right, open source software, but we haven't really built that experience with open models. And so the benefit of having something like OpenMDW um, as a, a single license is that you drop a single license in your repo, and even more important is the familiarity that, and, and comfortability that that license will bring, 
right? Because folks today are very comfortable with MIT, very comfortable with Apache 2.0, so comfortable that they reach for those when they're releasing models. Right. And those licenses don't conventionally cover the, all the artifacts that you'll find within uh, a model, right, and its components. And so having a single model, or sorry, a single license in your repo provides that benefit of, hey, when I go and download this model, I know exactly that I can use it for whatever purpose I need, and I can build an application on it, I can you know, safely and responsibly use it within my enterprise. And so there is that like, very nice um, you know, label that you get with it that says, sure. hey, this is open source and you can do what you like. Well, and I also see it as the devils are in the details, right? If you miss something, that, that can be a big miss. Sure. Right? And that's a, that's a big challenge. So I think having a, a, a unified approach or standardized approach makes a lot of sense. Um, I want to talk about, and this is kind of a big topic that comes up with, with regards to AI artifacts and such, is you know, t copyright, uh, patents, trademarks, infringement, and all this. How do you protect this with, with that model? Right, so the, the copyright, um, the expectation is that it's twofold, right? Is if you're going to include data in, with your distribution of your model, you need to make sure you've cleared th that you have rights to that data, right? If you don't, then, then the expectation is you should not redistribute that data, or if you do redistribute, redistribute the data, make sure that the license stays intact, okay. right? Um, when we look at, uh, you know, big like pre-training data sets, folks don't release those generally. Um, we know where to grab them because everybody's using sort of the same sources. Yep. But uh, when you redistribute a model, you're probably going to more likely find like reinforcement learning type data and preference data, you know, data that's smaller data sets. And a lot of that is human curated, right? And some of it's machine generated, but a lot of it's human curated. And so you want to make sure that if you've curated that data that you're releasing it and you are the source of that, um, that data. Yeah. With the other with other respects, like this, the OpenMDW license does cover off all of the patent and other considerations, um, database and so forth, that will protect downstream users from um, you know getting into trouble. Right. Well, let's talk about those downstream users. I mean, when we think about the collaboration and innovation that kind of kind of plays into this, right? Um, how do like why is no copy left or attribution only kind of approach or design of you know of this of this way of doing is significant for those downstream developers or even enterprises and how that might how is it going to affect the collaboration or innovation? Sure, like if, if anything we've seen even with permissive licenses that we continue to have collaboration, right? And and, and contributions. And so you know, we look at like PyTorch, VLM, and these other software projects. They are released under permissive licenses. Apache 2.0 and MIT are sort of prepared today for a lot of models. And we see that people are taking these models, they are fine tuning them, they're quantizing them, they're applying different optimizations. And in some cases, they, in many cases, in fact, they release their work back to the public. They repost the model to Hugging Face. Um, and then in some cases, maybe they just take it in house, right? Right, right? And we want to we want the folks to innovate, right? We want them to be able to be at the liberty to be able to do what they want to do. And not everyone is going to contribute back, right? We see a lot of companies using PyTorch, and not everybody makes contributions to it. Um, but by and large, most of the the industry does, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, let me ask you this, a, a different question. I think using it, uh, I can, just from our brief conversation here, I can see the but the benefits of it. Um, let's talk about pitfalls or potential consequences of, of you know, that could emerge from adopting a license like this. What, what would be some of the pitfalls? So I think the alternative today is Apache 2.0 and MIT, right? Which we've already established don't fully outlay all of the um, aspects of, of models, right? And the harms and the potential misuses. And so OpenMDW has, covers off disclaimers around, uh, you know, you take on certain responsibility when you're using the model, and you understand that it could be possibly misused, and we like to you know, fall back to the court system to make a lot of the decisions around you know, legalities, right? Like, we're not in the law enforcement business. Sure. So, um, but the, uh, the, the great thing is, is that uh, we outline specifically model outputs, right? We say we don't impose any restrictions on model outputs. That is really something that um, we think is very, you know, very permissive. Look at at uh, model usage, and when you look at some 
you know, community-based licenses, they impose certain restrictions, or they don't explicitly call this out. And people are you know, left to understand, hey, if the model produces code, is that code subject to copyright? And yeah. right yeah, now, if under uh, you know, conventional open source software license, it, it would be, right? And yeah, so there's accountability, right? right. I mean, organizations need to own it, right? right? I mean, if they, and it's like, you know, just turning away going, well, I pulled it from somewhere, or I used it, you're still accountable if you right. push it out the door. I think it's important. So let, let me ask this, I mean, we look at this as, as an, it's an evolution. Things are changing very rapidly. We see that you know here at Open Source Summit, it's we see a lot of innovation occurring, uh, a lot of new paths to do things, but also convergings of, of uh, technologies to kind of get to where you need to go for these organizations. A year from now, when we're sitting here and we're talking about you know PyTorch and we're talking about the adoption and we're talking, where do you see it and where do you think it's going to go from here? Sure. So if we're talking about like PyTorch, the framework, I think the Framework's going to evolve with the industry. Um, we are always incorporating the best, you know, um, innovations out of out of industry and out of research. And then, if you look at the foundation, you know, the foundation we expect to continue to grow, um, grow our membership, grow more projects, create a really rich and robust ecosystem of AI projects that will, you know, have fairly low friction, right? Like, yeah. because we have the benefit of having this very unified community working together to make sure that everything is interoperable and um, as, you know, there's innovations that are coming very quickly that we probably can't predict today, um, that maybe a year or two down the road, uh, we didn't have the foresight to, to predict. Um, and, and we expect, you know, we're, we're very fast adopters, right? AI is moving quick. We have to adopt fast, quick, very quickly as well. Yeah. And so we see that stuff, you know, see those innovations coming into in the form of new projects, or we see them as features in existing projects. Yeah, well, I definitely think you're, you're spot on. Your successes so far have really grown and shown like the adoption is, is taking off. Um, well, you know, I, I know we're at the end of our session here. I want to thank you for your insights. This has been really, really great. I think the audience got a lot out of what we talked about here, uh, but there's still a lot to learn, right? Sure. Uh, where would they go to learn more information? Um, so one of the, you know, we, um, the PyTorch website we have uh, tutorials and other pieces of information, um, FAQs and so forth that people can kind of get started with. We have a getting started page there as well. Um, also joining the Discord as well is, is, is super important to get engaged with the community. But moreover, we actually are, will be launching our uh, PyTorch training and certification programs okay. uh, this October at the PyTorch conference. And so you know, welcome folks to come out and uh, spend the day learning about PyTorch and uh, you know, we're reaching out to folks that are entry level and folks that are more experienced and uh, we'll hopefully have uh, content that they can use and uh, get certified on. Very cool, very cool. Well, I appreciate your time today. This has been really great. And I appreciate you watching our session today. My name is Paul Nashawati. I'm coming to you live from the show floor at Open Source Summit uh, North America 2025. Thank you for watching theCUBE, the leading source in tech news.